Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking over your original perk ideas. A couple days ago I put out a community post asking you for your perk ideas, and there was a pretty big response, so obviously I can't cover all of your ideas today, but maybe we can do some more videos on this at some point. Alright, let's get started. We're gonna begin with some survivor perks. Dark Tide Has Legs came up with the perk Misdirection. After being chased for a short time, any scratch marks you leave will not fade away for the remainder of that chase. This is a very interesting idea and acts as a deception perk that activates mid-chase. I like this one a lot because it also rewards you for remaining in a chase for a long duration, but doesn't just give you a direct benefit, as you still have to break line of sight and be sneaky with how you run the killer. Yeah, I like this perk. I don't have too many additions, my only criticism of this perk would be that it is quite niche, but I do like that it provides an opportunity for a sudden playstyle. Next up from Murray Reed, we have the perk Studious. When in a locker for 11, 10, 9 seconds, you can see the location of all locked chests and dull hex totems remaining in the trial. Another cool one that I could see being quite a great counter to perks like Noed, especially in the endgame, and a good alternative to something like Small Game, which requires you to be closer, and doesn't give a direct position. To even this perk out a bit, I think a range should be put on it. Maybe something like all dull totems and chests within 48 meters of the locker are revealed. This perk is very interesting and serves a unique purpose, and would be great to pair with stuff like Inner Strength, or I'm sorry, Inner Healing. Yeah. <laughs> From L Kingston, we have the perk Boon DIY. Press and hold the active ability button near a doll or hex totem to bless it and create a boon totem. Soft chimes ring out within a radius of 24 meters. When in the 24 meter radius of your boon totem, items regenerate. An item reaches 100% after 30, 25, 20 seconds. Okay, I really like the idea, but I think this is just a bit too powerful. What I want to suggest instead is that we make this perk almost like a slow charge port for items, so those those numbers I think should be quadrupled honestly, to 120, 180 seconds to fully refill charges, just to make it a little bit more balanced. The benefit of this though, that I like a lot, over something like Built to Last, is that you could bring multiple items to charge up at once. But yeah, to justify this, the charge time definitely has to be longer I think. From Matty we have X Machina, once per trial, when suffering the exposed status effect, an attack that would normally put you in the dying state will instead put you in the deep wound state. This is a really cool idea, although I do think a small prerequisite such as taking two protection hits or breaking a totem or something like that is necessary. Otherwise, I think it's pretty fair. Situational, kinda niche, but would certainly come in clutch and wouldn't feel too unfair I don't think. Okay, so this next one is an exhaustion perk presumably. It's called Donkey Kick and it's made by XX Scrunch XX. Doing the running vault animation into the killer will cause the killer to be stunned for a small duration. So this is kinda like a different version of head-on. I like this too, it's a pretty unique exhaustion perk that gets you to do a bit more than just press a button. One thing I will say about this is that I think it needs a small prerequisite. A bit like head-on has a four second timer whilst in a locker, I think this perk potentially needs a timer somewhere too. I'm thinking this perk should require you to be in a chase for four seconds prior to its usage, just to make sure it's not abused or overused on the killer. It seems to be a perk that you would use in a chase anyway, so I think this would kind of make sense. Next up is an item-based perk by Humperdink, named high bounty. After plundering an item from a chest, enter a locker for 10 seconds to increase the item's rarity by one tier. Works once per trial. Spawns two extra chests in the trial. I love this one. It's like a reverse hoarder, kind of. Again, kinda niche, but unique and a perk that could create some cool builds. The changes I would make would be to remove the once per trial and then give it a cooldown of about 60 seconds maybe. Maybe it could even be token based, so you get three usages or three tokens or something like that. On to another cool exhaustion perk idea from Creeper Piggy called Retribution. When a killer misses a swing, press the active ability button to kick them back, stunning the killer for 4 seconds and applying the exhausted status effect to yourself for 60, 50, 40 seconds. Retribution cannot be used whilst exhausted. This one is for all you 360 spin people out there. Again, a different kind of exhaustion perk than what we currently have, and quite an interesting one. And one that doesn't just focus on running away. It's pretty fair I think, as long as the killer is disciplined with their swings, it won't really affect them, and it's also going to reward the survivor for pulling off a nice dodge. Only change I would make is to say that the swing needs to be a lunge and not just a swing, otherwise you could have the survivor's body blocking when a teammate is being carried, and you could kick them out of the killer's grasp, which doesn't seem so fair. Okay, let's look at some of your killer perks. First up from H. Aaron or Haron, we have the perk Out of Chain. An eighth generator appears in the trial. It is not connected to the power lines, and if repaired, these will not grant any progress.
progress towards powering the exit gates. It appears similar to the other generators for the killer. Survivors cannot see this generator with aura reading perks or items. Love it. Very unique way to slow down the game, and more interesting I would argue than something like Ruin, but equally counterable by being attentive as a survivor. Seeing this 8 generators, and noticing it doesn't appear with your aura perks. Yeah, I think this is great. Very unique, very interesting, overall quite fair I think. One singular Josh came up with the perk Switcheroo. Whenever an exit gate is fully activated, the exit gate stays shut and the other exit gate opens instead. The aura of the opened exit gate is revealed to you for 6, 8, 10 seconds. I presume the idea of this is that it's meant to kinda confuse the survivors by having them open one gate only for the other to open, giving you as the killer a potential second chance to down someone. Again, a much more interesting way to implement an endgame perk over something like Noed. I'm not entirely sure if the aura part is meant for the survivor or the killer, because killers see exit gates regardless, so I think it's meant for survivor, which I think would be fair. They open one gate, they see the other, they have to sprint to it before they're caught. That's a cool little mini game almost. Next killer perk is from Ghost Tesla, and is named Scourge Hook Mirage. At the beginning of the trial, four hooks are transformed into Scourge Hooks. The first time each hook is used to hook a survivor, the perk activates. When the perk activates, an illusionary copy of the hook survivor is created on another hook. The aura of the copy is revealed instead of the aura of the original hook survivor. When a survivor gets within 4, 3, 2 meters of the copy, it is dispelled and the aura of the original survivor is revealed, unless the original survivor has already been unhooked. Very interesting idea. I don't think it would be possible to implement, but it's a really cool idea. And a cool and proper deception perk for the killer side. Again, very cool, I just feel like technically it just wouldn't be able to be implemented. Next up, we have a perk from DMG Unknown, or DM Gun Known, I think it's probably the first one, which is called Broken Punishment. Upon being stunned or blinded, your next basic attack on any survivor will affect them with the broken status effect for 30, 50, 60 seconds. Whilst I like the idea of this perk, almost like an anti-bully perk, I don't think it needs to be a new one. However, I would love to see this basically become the ability of a perk we already have named Forced Penance, which is currently, like, never used. Or this could at least be added additionally to that perk. I think that would be a great change. Very simple, but very interesting idea. From Donald76, we have Hex Loneliness. If a survivor isn't near another survivor, brackets 24 meter radius, they gain the exposed status effect until the totem is cleansed or until they enter the radius of a survivor. This one sounds pretty powerful at first, but I really don't think it's that bad. Right off though, I think that radius needs to be up to maybe 36 meters to 48 meters. Somewhere around that point, I think. I think this is very interesting interesting though, and creates this awesome little mini game. It's almost like how Blood Pact works for survivors. This could create strategies where you pair up at the start of the game, which let's be honest is something a lot of teams do anyway, yet it would punish survivors for going solo and trying to complete more gens at once, but equally it could reward that riskier play. So it's kind of a slowdown perk too, which I like, but a way more interesting one than Corrupt or Ruin, which just grounds gameplay to a halt sometimes. Okay, for these next ones, I like the ideas of, but I think that actually work better as game mechanics rather than perks. So first up we have Aki's perk idea called Revenge. Whenever you are on a hook and the killer is within 8, 10, 12 meters of you and not in a chase, Revenge activates and goes on a 5 second cooldown. After the cooldown ends, slow your hook timer by 10% and gain a token to a maximum of 5. For each token, steal 10, 25, 50 blood points per second from the killer while this perk is active. After being unhooked, you lose all your tokens and Revenge activates. The longer the killer stays near your hook, the slower your timer and the more BP you steal. I think this should just be a basic punishment mechanic and not even a perk, to deter camping killers. Potentially the only time it could deactivate is during the endgame collapse when camping may be more warranted, and as they stated, during chases too. From Adam Francis official we have the perk Creator. After collecting parts from four other broken pallets, Creator will activate. Pressing the active ability button on a broken pallet allows you to rebuild the pallet, and place it back in its original position. When used, you will get an 80, 70, 60 seconds cooldown prior to using Creator again. Again, a really cool idea. This I like a lot because it could be implemented almost like a side objective for survivors. A few numbers I would change though would be making it three broken pallet pieces, then also adding some kind of craft duration animation when making the new one. Next up, we have kind of an anti-ruin perk from Epic Gamer Man called Restoration. When working on a generator that was damaged before you started working on it, you repair 10, 15, 20% faster until it reaches the point it was at before being damaged. This again is just a great idea that should
should be a base mechanic. It would be a fair counter to perks like Ruin, and would serve as a means to potentially overcome a situation like a 3 gen. It would still be hard, but this would help out. Personally, I'm all for it, but maybe as a compromise, half the numbers though to 5, 7.5, 10%, 10%, and make it non-stackable with multiple survivors. From SQW0T, we have Don't Waste My Time. Hitting a survivor at an open exit gate blocks that gate for 4, 6, 8 seconds. This one is a really cool idea, which would stop survivors waiting at the exit gates to taunt and stuff, and as much as I like the idea, I think there's far too many situations when it would block survivors in that aren't trying to be toxic. Cool idea, but a bit like the Scourge Hook one, I don't think it would be able to be implemented too well unfortunately. If there is some kind of mechanic or perk that could make this fair though, I would love to see it. Finally, Little Dragon 3 came up with birds. Every time a survivor walks past a crow, the crow will chase them, and the more crows they have, the more noise they will make. I just wanted to add this one in here. It's a meme perk, but I thought it was a really fun idea, and I would love to see more crow-based perks implemented honestly. Alright, well that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and be sure to drop your own thoughts on these perks down below. Thanks, and goodbye.